So for the past few years, I've been using a 60% keyboard for gaming and a full-size keyboard on my work setup. And I've always wanted to try a keyboard that can do both, something that doesn't compromise on functionality, but also isn't as big as a traditional full-size keyboard. So I was really excited when Creo announced the Hive 98. This is a 98 key, 96% mechanical keyboard, and there's a lot to like about it. For starters, it has a very clean and simple design. Uh, it's almost got a retro feel to it. It's not too aggressive and it's available in four colors. So you can get it in a all white, a all black, a white purple, and a black purple variant. So basically, it can go along with any setup out there. And you also have uh, three options for your switch type. So you can get it with a blue clicky switch or a red linear switch. And you also have the option for a brown tactile switch. And these are all Otemo switches. I you know, really like red and brown switches. But if you're the type of person who likes the clack and you know likes the loud uh, keystrokes, totally go for blues. But for everyone else, red and brown is the way to go and the 98 percent layout is super interesting of course it is you know way bigger than a 60 percent keyboard but when you put the hive 98 against a traditional full-size keyboard it is not that big since it gets rid of the keys between the number pad and the rest of the keyboard so page down page up insert i personally never use those keys and i know a lot of people don't so i'm really glad this form factor you know exists and yeah, it is the perfect balance between size and functionality. You get dedicated arrow keys, number pad, volume wheel, and a regular function row. So there's no fiddling around with the FN key. But of course, there are still shortcuts here that you can use with the FN key. Now, it doesn't end there. The Hive 98 is also built fairly well. It's completely made out of plastic, but it's decent quality plastic. And the keyboard doesn't flex or creak. It feels sturdy in the hand. It's also got some heft to it. 722 grams to be exact. And you've got you know, a USB Type-C port here, so the cable is detachable. And you also have uh, two levels of height adjustment. So you have this uh, tiny kickstand, uh, and you also have this slightly bigger kickstand with rubber feet, so the keyboard doesn't slip around. And I like that you have you know, the option to prop this up into an ergonomic typing position. Since this is a full-size keyboard, you're gonna use it for work and productivity, so that's important. I personally never use the kickstand, I just you know leave my keyboard on the default height. Now, my favorite part about the Hive 98 is the volume knob. It's made out of metal, really high quality, and feels good to use. And it's not a free spinning wheel, so there are notches or clicks in between, and each click is plus two or minus two volume in Windows, and you can uh, press the volume knob to completely mute the computer. And just like you know other products from Creo, this works on a Mac as well. I tried it with the Mac Mini M1 and I had no issues. I personally use it for video editing since I need the number pad. Now talking about tech stuff, you've got Otemo switches here, which is the least interesting part about this keyboard. Like they've done some good stuff. You've got a layer of foam below the PCB for sound dampening. I'll give you guys a sound test in a bit. Uh, this keyboard is also hot swappable. So you can use basically any switch on the market. You're not limited to Otema switches. It has a five pin socket, so you could you know, technically use cherry switches as well. But this keyboard is not very modding friendly. Uh, first off, there are no visible screws. So to open this keyboard, you'll have to use like a guitar pick or something that you can use to lift this top panel. And it's not very easy to remove uh, the switches. They're kind of tight. So out of the four switches that I was able to remove from this keyboard, I damaged two of them. So I kind of cracked the body on two of them. Uh, now, Creo does include two extra switches uh, with the keyboard. They also include a USB Type-C to Type-A cable and a keycap and key switch puller. And talking about the keycaps, these are just basic ABS style keycaps. You could add PBT keycaps here, but they are kind of pricey and this keyboard only costs 3,200 rupees. So at that point, uh, you might as well get a better keyboard. You can check out the Creo Swarm, which is coming soon on the channel. So stay tuned for that. And the keyboard also has a 1000 Hertz polling rate and you can change that in the software. But since this is a wired keyboard, you can just leave it at 1000. Now, since I mentioned wired, uh, here is the USB Type-C port and the cable is detachable. And the cable that Creo includes is pretty decent quality. It's not braided, but it's very long. So even if your PC is on the floor or kind of far away, it should be fine. Now, things that you could do uh, for customization is put on different keycaps, but 
I wouldn't really buy this keyboard for modding. I would buy something like a Red Dragon or a Royal Kludge. They're easier to open and more modding friendly in my opinion. Now I'm not a modding expert, so you guys let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. But yeah, that's that. Now overall, it's got all the basic features. You've got anti-ghosting, N-key rollover, the switches are rated for 60 million keystrokes. You've also got Windows lock and it's got perky RGB with north facing LEDs. And Creo has a software for this, uh, which I'll leave a link down below in the description too, so you guys can download it. It's got all the features uh, that you would expect. So you can change the brightness, the colors, the effects. Uh, you can have individual keys light up. You can make macros and change shortcuts and stuff. The software doesn't look that great, but will get the job done. Now, in terms of RGB, I like it. It's bright. The effects are really nice and smooth. Uh, and yeah, having perky RGB is always nice since you can have individual keys light up in different colors. Now, uh, one thing I noticed was the legend on the keys uh, when light shines through it sometimes appears to be blurred, especially on uh, the colored keycaps, so the purple ones. It's not as crisp and sharp as some of the other keyboards I've tried. Now, it's not a deal breaker. There are no visibility issues here. You can, you know, see the keys fine without RGB and with RGB. It's just something I wanted to mention. Now, I wish I could say uh, good things about the stabilizers on this keyboard, because the stabilizers on the Hive 98 are kind of loose and they feel rattly. Like, I've tried keyboards in a similar price bracket that have slightly better stabilizers. They don't rattle as much. Now, they could be tuned better in the future or they could be lubed. I am expecting too much, but I think Creo can, you know, come up with a solution. They just sound kind of cheap. Like the rest of the keyboard is fine. It sounds decent, but the keys that have stabilizers below them, uh, they kind of rattle and have that metal sound. So that's something I wanted to mention as well. Now, talking about the sound test, here is how the Hive 98 sounds. Now, I also wanna let you guys know that the Red Dragon keyboard I'm using is modded. So I've added a layer of foam and also done the tape mod. I haven't looped the switches, but yeah, that's the reason it kind of sounds different. Now, coming to my experience with the Hive 98, for gaming, I use a very simple setup. I have a Logitech G Pro X Superlight on a Cybart Go series mouse pad, and this is a 45 centimeter by 40 centimeter mouse pad, so it's a big pad. And I mainly play uh, FPS games, so CS2 and Valorant. I play on 800 DPI and very low sense since I need all of that mouse space. So personally for gaming, it's fine, but I usually play games with my keyboard tilted on an angle. And I feel this takes up a lot of space and takes up a little bit of my mouse space as well. Now, personally, if you don't tilt your keyboard or if you're not a sweaty tryhard like me, the Hive 98 is completely fine for gaming. And if you play anything other than FPS games, if you're into story games or single player games, uh, this is perfect. Now, where the Hive 98 shines, in my opinion, is in productivity-based setups, where you need a compact keyboard with a volume wheel and a number pad. If you're a video editor, a content creator, if you, you know, type a lot, if you're into programming and stuff, I think this is perfect. Very attractive uh, for a price of 3,200 rupees. The experience is pretty good. Now, that's my two cents on the Creo Hive 98. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you guys don't miss out on future uploads. I'll leave links down below in the description so you guys can check out the Hive 98 on Creo's website. And if you're interested in buying, please do use my links. It does help the channel out a lot. 
But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.